Maxwell Chikumbutso's aircraft just completed a 72-hour continuous flight and the world is still catching its breath. It was not simply about the duration, but what it proved was possible for the future of aviation. The aircraft, sleek and futuristic, sliced through skies with a quiet authority that belied its groundbreaking nature. From the very beginning, this flight was meant to test the limits of endurance, efficiency, and engineering vision. The moment the wheels lifted from the runway, Maxwell's dream was taking off in more ways than one. What set this plane apart wasn't just its silhouette, but the engine that hummed with innovation rather than combustion. This was not a jet fueled by traditional aviation gas. It was something far more advanced, something bold. At the core of this marvel was a self-sustaining propulsion system developed over years of relentless work. Maxwell's proprietary greener power solution, GPS, was not just efficient, it was revolutionary. Using a combination of RF energy harvesting, magnetic oscillation, and precision microinverters, the aircraft was powered in a loop of generated and recycled energy. Energy that didn't rely on a single drop of fossil fuel. The first visuals of the aircraft in motion showed wings made of ultra-lightweight composite materials that shimmered like carbon silk. Its aerodynamic profile wasn't just a result of good design but mathematical perfection engineered with AI-augmented modeling. Maxwell Chikambutso believed in nature-inspired engineering, and you could see it in the wing curvature mimicking eagle feathers. The fuselage, shaped for minimal drag, was the result of iterative testing in low-resistance wind tunnels. This aircraft wasn't just created in a lab but born out of relentless prototyping and refinement. Inside the cockpit, though rarely needed during its autonomous operation, lay a simple console, a testament to its minimal power draw. The craft flew in silence over deserts, oceans, and cities, monitored from a ground station built into Maxwell's innovation lab. Behind this flight was a network of engineers, AI systems, and predictive diagnostic algorithms running simulations in real time. The temperature of each component, the wind speed on every panel, and the electromagnetic flux were constantly recorded and balanced. This allowed the plane to make millisecond adjustments in flight for optimal energy preservation. One of the most crucial breakthroughs was the magnetic propulsion system, eliminating traditional turbines altogether. Instead of fuel combustion, electromagnetic thrust was generated using Maxwell's restructured rf to motion converter array. That system functioned through induced polarity shifts controlled by an onboard quantum processor. Each second of flight required billions of calculations, all done silently and flawlessly. The aircraft never dipped below its optimal altitude, thanks to smart altitude profiling using LiDAR and satellite uplink. Even the battery packs were unlike any seen before, ultra-dense graphene supercapacitor hybrids. Charging was seamless, continuous, and nearly lossless through Maxwell's wireless ground recharge relays. As the aircraft cruised at altitude, it absorbed ambient radio frequency energy and converted it into direct propulsion input. That meant it didn't need to land to refuel. It didn't even need sunlight or wind. Its autonomy allowed for safe bypass of weather systems, real-time threat detection, and active path correction. Flying at 30,000 feet, it never once veered off course, proving the viability of self-sustained long-haul flights. Maxwell's engineering focused not just on flight, but also on endurance, silence, and environmental neutrality. His aircraft did not leave a carbon trail, make sonic booms, or require maintenance stops. For 72 hours, the world watched and re-watched the live telemetry data posted across public tracking networks. Each moment reaffirmed that something special was in the air, something beyond imagination. This was no fluke but a feat built upon a decade of tireless effort, trial, and belief in the impossible. When the aircraft finally descended and touched down with soft precision, a crowd erupted into spontaneous applause. The landing was smooth, electric, literally, and represented the climax of one man's vision and one team's genius. Engineers embraced, data logs confirmed the predictions, and Maxwell himself stood quietly, humbled but triumphant. The scientific community was in awe not just of the endurance, but of the entire new ecosystem of flight that had been unveiled. No conventional jet could match its efficiency, no drone its intelligence, no aircraft its eco-friendliness. 
Maxwell had moved beyond convention, creating something entirely unbound by aviation's past limitations. Industry analysts began recalculating cost-benefit projections for airlines, drones, cargo delivery, and defense applications. The ripple effect was immediate with speculation, mounting about how quickly this technology could be adopted. Nations began reaching out, and universities worldwide initiated research papers dissecting the flight data. Every detail, every log, every second of that flight became a subject of fascination and analysis. The question was no longer whether self-powered flight was possible, but how fast it would spread. Maxwell's legacy was already sealed in those 72 hours, but his mind had already moved to what came next. That's the thing about visionaries. They rarely stop to celebrate. They continue to build. He hinted at next-gen aircraft already in testing, capable of atmospheric to orbital transitions. But for now, the focus remained on the aircraft that had made the impossible not just probable, but proven. Its contribution to aviation wasn't just technical. It was symbolic of what African innovation could contribute to the global tech space. Maxwell had shown that with determination, talent, and belief, the sky was not the limit. It was only the beginning. Governments were already exploring potential uses for humanitarian relief, especially in hard-to-reach conflict zones. The idea that an aircraft could fly for three days, land on nearly any terrain, and carry critical supplies was revolutionary. Likewise, environmental agencies expressed interest in using the craft for long-duration monitoring missions. Its quiet propulsion and zero-emission output made it perfect for wildlife observation without disturbance. Tech companies began pitching ideas for transforming the aircraft into a high-altitude data platform or communication relay. The applications were almost too many to count, and Maxwell's team was already fielding dozens of partnership offers. Each use case shared a common route, endurance, reliability, and low operational cost. Aviation, as the world had known it, was now irreversibly altered. Aircraft manufacturers began considering retrofit options to integrate Maxwell's core propulsion units into existing designs. Even military contractors took notice, intrigued by the stealth, range, and silent cruising capability. Maxwell had built more than a plane, he had architected a technological pivot point. Maxwell's next steps were already unfolding even before the applause from the historic landing had faded. Blueprints lined his lab walls, each iteration more ambitious than the last. He wasn't content with endurance alone. He wanted adaptability, autonomy, and scalability. This journey would delve into how the 72-hour flight was just the beginning of a much grander narrative. The aircraft's architecture had opened new frontiers in design philosophy itself. No longer was aviation constrained by the hard triangle of range, payload, and efficiency. Maxwell had proven those limitations could be shattered through radical innovation. The materials used were not just lightweight, they were smart. Embedded sensors in the wing membranes allowed constant shape optimization mid-flight. This biomimetic response allowed the aircraft to adjust to air pressure, thermal variance, and wind turbulence in real time. The wings, inspired by birds of prey and engineered through thousands of simulations, dynamically flexed without hydraulic systems. That meant less weight, fewer failure points, and more agility. Even the landing gear had evolved, using magnetoactive polymers that hardened upon descent but softened during cruising. Every inch of the aircraft screamed modularity. Components could be swapped out, upgraded, or reprogrammed on demand. In the weeks following the flight, Maxwell's lab became a nexus for global scientific collaboration. Data scientists from Japan collaborated with propulsion engineers from Germany. African universities sent their brightest minds to intern under Maxwell's guidance. What was once a quiet lab on the continent became a symbol of a new global research hub. The economic potential of the aircraft was now undeniable. Cargo corporations quickly grasped the implications, unmanned, long-distance freight delivery without fuel costs. Developing countries envisioned replacing entire air logistics systems with Chikambuzo's designs. Environmental groups saw the craft as a breakthrough in reducing aviation's carbon footprint. Its quiet profile made it ideal for emission-sensitive regions and wildlife corridors. The humanitarian potential also became clearer as Maxwell conducted new tests with specialized payloads. 
thermal mapping, water purification systems, food drops, and medical drone capsules were tested from its bay. The idea was to build a fleet of purpose-driven autonomous aircraft with modular internal frameworks. Maxwell called it the Adaptive Relief Aviation System, ARIS for short. It would be able to dispatch anywhere in the world within hours, powered only by the air around it. News anchors began calling it the Noah's Ark of Disaster Zones. There was poetry in the idea, a silent savior gliding in with no roar, no pollution, just hope. Maxwell insisted, however, that ARAS would be open source. His belief was that life-saving technology should not be behind a paywall. Tech giants lined up offering billions to acquire patents, but he declined. Instead, he called on the global coding and engineering community to contribute to the platform. Hackathons, summits, and open design challenges were launched across five continents. The goal was collective optimization. What worked in Namibia might need tweaking in Nepal. It wasn't just about the aircraft anymore, it was about reimagining the supply chain of the skies. Maxwell introduced a decentralized aviation ledger using blockchain to monitor aircraft integrity. That meant real-time part tracking, flight path auditing, and predictive maintenance powered by transparency. Each aircraft became a living node in a global aerial web. As more units were manufactured, this mesh network began self-learning. A flight over Botswana taught algorithms how to conserve battery during sandstorms. That lesson was then uploaded to help another craft preparing to fly over the Australian outback. The network grew smarter, leaner, and more resilient with every mile flown. Then came the idea of air citizenship. Communities that hosted recharge hubs and data towers became part owners in the aircraft network. They earned royalties based on distance flown, missions completed, and data collected. It was aviation meets the gig economy, with empowerment rooted in participation. In Rwanda, local schools used credits from the aircraft to fund student scholarships. In Senegal, farmers used aerial data from passing flights to better time crop cycles. The aircraft was no longer a machine, it was infrastructure. This societal integration marked perhaps the most profound element of Maxwell's vision. He wasn't merely building machines, he was architecting ecosystems. Ecosystems where innovation was not imported, but born and distributed. With each new iteration, the aircraft became more modular, more intelligent, and more socially embedded. Urban planning councils began using its capabilities for city mapping, pollution tracking, and even emergency routing. Chikambutso's 72-hour flight was now seen as the Wright Brothers moment of this century. It had birthed a new aviation language, one fluent in autonomy, community, and sustainability. And still, Maxwell pressed forward. He teased a new prototype, a vertical takeoff model capable of precision landings on mobile platforms. Military applications began to emerge, but Maxwell remained adamant about peaceful deployments. He envisioned border surveillance not as deterrence, but as humanitarian reconnaissance. Rescue before tragedy, prevention before crisis. This doctrine was baked into the aircraft's code, literally and philosophically. Failsafes ensured it could not be used for arm strikes. His belief that innovation should elevate humanity, not endanger it. The aircraft story is far from over, but its legacy is already undeniable. It taught the world that the boundaries of flight are not in the atmosphere but in our imagination. It proved that African minds are not just contributors to global tech, they are its torchbearers. As the aircraft glides silently across another sky, one thing is clear. The age of fossil-fueled aviation is closing. In its place, an era of regenerative, intelligent, and inclusive flight begins. Thanks to Maxwell Chikambutso and his fearless team, we now are not just higher, but wiser.